Hey everyone, it's Olivia, your favorite activist YouTuber, and I'm back with another interview with an awesome person. Uh, last week I interviewed Julia Clark, who was my camp counselor at Yay Camp, and today I'm going to talk with the founder and director, the amazing Nora Kramer. Welcome, Nora. Thanks so much for being here. Thanks for having me on, Olivia, and thanks for doing this awesome show. Thank you. Yeah. Um, what is Yay Camp? So Yay Camp stands for Youth Empowered Action Camp. And up until this year, for the last decade, we have been an overnight, a week-long overnight summer camp for aspiring activists, for folks who want to make a bigger difference on a social justice cause that they care about. And this year, we kind of took a different turn because of COVID, and we launched a virtual camp um, this summer. And we did a, a winter virtual camp as well. And this year we're continuing to really look to evolve our work to, um, to bring more virtual programs out into the world. But our, our mission is, is the same, whether we're doing in-person camps or not, um, is to help aspiring activists make a bigger difference on the social justice causes that they care about. That's so awesome. Yeah, I've obviously done Yay Camp and it's super awesome and super helpful, so. Aww. Absolutely suggest it. And um, could you share with us what inspired you to start Yay Camp and how you did it? Yeah, so I had been an activist for a, quite a few years at that point, and I had found that young people tended to be the most open minded when they heard about a problem in the world. Um, it was kind of like when obviously this is a generalization, but a lot of times young people, when they would hear about a, a social justice problem, their attitude was more like, well, what can I do about that? Like, how can I help? And I felt like adults tended to be more like, well, what can I do? I mean, I'm just one person. I have a job. I have kids. I have responsibilities. As if they'd kind of given up on the thought of being able to make a difference. And it seemed like younger people hadn't given up yet. And I really got to thinking like, what, what happens to people when they're younger? They're like, oh, what can I do about this? And that something happens where they kind of give up. And I felt that what happens is that people don't learn what to do about the passion that they have to try to make the world better. They don't see role models. And we don't learn about it in school really how social change happens. Um, we don't be, boost people's confidence. We don't make it cool to care. Um, and people don't learn the skills to be able to actually make a difference uh, in the world. And so it makes sense that people would just say, well, I guess it's impossible to really do anything and kind of give up. So um, I started working with kids as much as I could. It got me really interested in how could I work with, with kids. So I started volunteering at after school programs and um, working with youth in different kinds of ways. And um, along the way, I had some parents and um, uh, middle school kids who I was working with ask me if I had any suggestions for things that their kids could do during the summer because they were too young to intern or volunteer even. Um, and I had gone to camp as a kid, um, just a regular, you know, mainstream camp. and. It got me thinking like, I wonder if there's any camps like this out there. I knew there were camps for, you know, sports or for theater or band or whatever. Um, and I started looking around and I couldn't find what I wanted to recommend. Mm -hmm. So it took me about eight years from when I first had that idea till when I actually started it. So when you ask like, how did I start it? Um, I got the idea and then I realized I didn't know how to run a summer camp, start a summer camp, all of those things. So I spent about eight years just learning. I did, was doing a ton of different types of activism. I volunteered at um, lots of different youth programs. I um, went and worked at different summer camps. I worked at the closest things that I could find to what I wanted to exist. Um, so I worked at camps all around the country. Um, I got training to be a camp director. I got my um, teaching credential and just did tons of leadership trainings and 
communication trait. Just I did as much as I could to develop myself to be the person that I wanted to exist to start this camp. And um, in 2009, I decided I was ready. And we did a pilot program with just 15 campers for five days. And it was amazing. It went really great. And it really validated that this was an idea that I wanted to continue pursuing. That's so cool. And I am very glad that you spent all that time uh -huh. learning and preparing so that your camp could exist. Me too. Um, so what is something you're most proud of or your favorite thing about your camp? Oh my God, there's so many things. Um, I think, well, I could, I'll just answer the two questions, I guess, at the same time, which is just how many campers have gone on to do such amazing things, you know, big things. Like you just, you mentioned having Julia Clark on was one of our campers who got the name of her high school changed from, it was being, it was named after a Confederate general and she got it changed to Justice High School. Um, and that was her action plan at camp when she was a teenager and she went and did it, right? And we have so many examples of people who've done things like that. Um, not all of them make the Washington Post like Julia did, um, but, you know, people doing, you know, even little things like people going vegetarian or vegan or people having the courage to speak up about things that are important to them, sharing openly on social media about the causes they care about or speaking up if they hear some racist comment or just that's a big part of what we do at Yay Camp is not just, you know, helping you launch some big project, but giving folks the confidence and the courage to express themselves and to be an advocate for the causes that are important to them. So to me, it's, it makes me so proud to think of all of the campers who've come through Yay Camp over the years who've told me that the camp made a big difference for them and that they've gone on and done, you know, a ton of activism that they said Yay Camp really helped them with. Like, when I think about that, I just am so proud that, you know, I helped in whatever little way I, I did um, to, you know, help make that possible. Yeah, that's so awesome. I love that there's like a camp where people can go and like learn about how to be a better person and how to like make change. It's super awesome. Uh, yeah, me too, me too. Yeah, you create a really safe and supportive environment at Yay Camp. How have you been able to do that? Um, thank you. That is definitely, uh, I feel like a foundational um, thing that we need to do for, for us to be able to help people really blossom and think about the, you know, how they can make a bigger difference in the world. If you're feeling like, oh, nobody likes me. I'm a loser here sitting by myself you know, it's hard, that's not an environment that's going to like help you create some like amazing project and speak up and make a difference, right? So I think, you know, that's really foundational for us um, is to create a really safe environment as much as possible. Um, we, we try to. So um, there's a lot of things that we do. I think one is just we attract amazing people and we bring together just you know, people who want to make the world a better place. And those tend to be nice people. <laughs> um, and I think people also feel safer just knowing that they're surrounded by people who care and um, people who, you know, they're rooting for and who are rooting for them. Um, just psychologically, that creates, you know, a, a level of trust. Um, I think we also... Um, I try to always speak very honestly and directly um, about feelings that can be really vulnerable. Um, and so that people know that it's a safe space to share about their fears about speaking up, their anxiety about taking certain action, um, the limiting beliefs that might stop them. We speak so openly about that in part because I want people to know that whatever sort of mind trash we all might have, like we all have it. Like whatever you think, oh, I can't do this because of blah, blah, blah. We all have some version of that. And by speaking really directly and pointing those things out, I think it creates a space where people feel like, oh, okay, I can, you know, I'm not gonna, like, it's not, that's not an environment where people can go and be mean to each other, right? Um, and then we also have an honor code and we take it really seriously. I think most, 
youth programs have some version of an honor code or rules and you know usually they're just kind of gathering dust somewhere or people don't even really know what they are but we really you know at our in-person camp we really go through it like really um and then even for our virtual camp we go through it in our orientation and campers you know need to agree to it ahead of time and we really take it seriously and i think we certainly at in-person camp it's very clear that um that that that's just we're, we're serious about upholding the the space that we want people to to create together that's great and going off that question could you tell my audience about guardian yes um, and it's funny because I almost I was thinking about it because I, I kind of did a guardian earlier that I didn't I didn't I'll reference in a second. So guardian is this word um, that uh, we developed at Yay Camp that it actually um, developed over time. Uh, so I don't deserve any, you know, I didn't create this. Um, but we had so in our honor code, one of the um, one of the elements of our honor code is no put downs. And one thing that we found is that our campers are really sweet and nice and rarely put one another down. That's just really rare. But what we found was that a lot of times people put themselves down. Yeah. We would, you know, we would find people saying things like, oh, I've never really done any activism. The only things I've done are, and then share like amazing things that they've done, right? Yeah, or like, oh, I'm really bad at this. Or, um, oh, I look terrible today. Or, you know, ways of minimizing themselves. Like we do our yay show, which is our version of a talent show. And so often when people are about to perform, they're like, oh, like I'm really bad at singing, but I'm going to sing. Or, you know, like find a way to, to criticize themselves in a way that they would never do to anybody else. Right? Like we, we, we are often quick to put ourselves down um, and not to, um, you know, wouldn't, we wouldn't speak in a, in such a way to, to other people in the negative way that we speak about ourselves. And so I have found that, um, you know, over the years that this was, was really prevalent and it actually developed where um, some campers were decided essentially that they wanted to interrupt that when they heard it and wanted to come up with like a creative way to do it. So the way we did that was, um, and it evolved over time, but we had a camper who um, runs a peer support and suicide prevention club at her school called the Guardian Club. And that's how we actually came up with the word that we wanted to use to interrupt when someone was putting themselves down. So even when I said before, like I made this little bit of difference for people or, um, yeah, exactly. or like say guardian to you, but then I was like, people won't understand what that. Won't means. understand it, yeah. Or if people would say, um, you know, if if I were to say like, oh, I'm such an idiot, I can't believe I forgot my phone at home or something. You know, again, that's something I would never say to somebody else. If they forgot their phone, I wouldn't say, oh, you're such an idiot, right? And yet sometimes we might say that about ourselves. So when you hear somebody say that, the what we do at Yay Camp is somebody or everybody will say guardian. And it's a way to, to notice, to point out to people the ways that we can put ourselves down, can be mean to each other, can um, minimize our accomplishments, can like shrink down. Um, and I think it's, it becomes a, a way of um, calling others up, you know, of calling others forward to um, to be their best selves and to not be mean to themselves. Yeah, I love Guardian. I think it's great. I'm mm -hmm. like, every time I go to Yay Camp, I like get in this, like, where I'll be in my head, like, all the time. Like, Guardian, like, one time I said to my friend, Guardian, just, like, randomly, and she was like, wait, what? Oh, I love it. <laughs> yeah, I. a lot of my friends who've never been to Yay Camp know this word. So it's a word that you can definitely share with your friends and family and you know, it doesn't need to be like a, you know, little secret code, yay camp word, like you can use it. Yeah, I love that. The energy of the like, you know, you're awesome at yay camp. Yeah. It's very cool. And finally, is there anything else that you would like to tell my audience? 
Well, if you want to find out more about Yay Camp, you can go to our website. It's yeacamp.org. Um, and we've got a bunch of resources on there. We have um, an ebook that I wrote that's called The Beginner's Guide to Changing the World that's free. You can check out on our website. Um, and this year, we're also uh, de- you know, evolving as an organization as we've been adjusting to the changing times with COVID. So we've got some cool new programs on the way um, that are going to be virtual, which you know, is designed to be safer, but obviously during COVID, but also I think this is a way where we as an organization can innovate and can find creative ways to reach a lot more people. So um, check back on our website to see what we're up to. This is a really, you know, unique time for for us and for a lot of organizations. Um, And really, I would just say, if you are somebody who cares about making the world better, there is no reason why you cannot take action on that passion. And there is so much that you can do. We have a page on our website um, called What You Can Do that lists um, not just, a, well, it lists a ton of organizations that you can connect with to, to get involved with. Um, and it gives a lot of ideas. It gives a, um, our like five ways to get involved to, to start making a difference. Um, and there's just a ton of other you know resources on our site, but just in general, there's so much that you can do to make the world better. And if you're someone who cares, like we need you, we need more people who care about our world to take action. And any time that you think, oh, I'm just one person or what can I do? You know, every person that you can think of that's ever made a difference, they were just one person too. And all of our actions add up. So Olivia, you making this video, me being here on this video, whoever's watching this video, every uh, active, you know, act of activism that led you and I to care and to get, you know, to take action, to make a difference in all these different ways, all of these things add up. So no one action is going to change the whole world, but it cumulatively all adds up. So I think it's just, to me, it's inspiring to recognize that even little things that we do add up. Um, and that helps me feel that, um, you know, I don't need to, you know, do some massive thing to make a difference. It takes like the pressure off, right? And I think especially when you're first getting started, if you think, oh, what can I do? A lot of times people are thinking too big, like, oh, I want to end climate change tomorrow. And it's like, okay, yeah, no one person's going to do that. But there's so much that you can do. I know you're really, you know, let's talk about veganism. That's something that people can do with their diet. But there's so much that people can do with getting involved in organizations, doing a fundraiser, spreading awareness about a cause that they care about. I mean, there's just endless possibilities of things that people can do. So um, whether, you know, anyone comes to Yay Camp or not, you know, there's other resources out there. Just, you know, there's Google, (laughs) there's YouTube, there's so much out there. Um, and so I just really encourage people to, to get involved. This, there's just too many important causes in the world for us not to be taking action to make a difference. So that's, you know, I think um, something that um, makes me just really happy to be here with you, Olivia, as someone who's a young person who's, who's making a difference in all kinds of ways. And, you know, it's, uh, it's uh, beautiful to have role models like yourselves at such a young age that we can follow. Thank you so much for being on. This was an amazing interview. And I don't know if uh, she's around, but I don't know. Um, I was wondering if maybe Ms. Daya might like to make an appearance. Oh, well, Daya is around. Um, she is doing her favorite activity, which is sleeping. My Daya dog. is my dog who, let's, let's get her in here. Hey, sleepyhead. Hi, you wanna... Daya. Hey, Daya. This is your big moment. Daya's the cutest dog in the whole world. <laughs> She's had a very busy day of sleeping. Um, I rescued Daya on her last day at the Fort Worth, Texas Animal Shelter nine years ago. And um, we, as they say, we rescued each other. So, yeah, she's, she's very, very sweet best friend of mine. She's amazing. I love her. <laughs> Thank you so much. This was an awesome interview. Thank you for watching and please subscribe for more awesome videos. Uh, hit the like button. 
uh, leave a comment down below if you have any questions or uh, video suggestions or requests. And I will see you in my next video. Thanks, Nora. Thank you, Olivia. Bye.